Hi everybody! Yes, it's that time again. It's over 50, so what? I'm Carol, and if you haven't seen the show before, this show is all about keeping healthy and active and having a fun quality of life as long as possible. And our first guest today is going to help with that. We have Andrew Jobling, author and speaker, and we're going to have a wellness zap. How to keep yourself positive throughout your day. After the break, our fitness routine is something a bit different. We're going to be doing some stretching because stretching is vital, not just for our flexibility, but for helping us to keep mobile in everyday life. And today's stretch routine, you can use a chair for support. Now, is there anyone out there who does not like music? And if you like music, have you put dancing on your bucket list yet? Dancing is fantastic, not just for your physical fitness and health, but it's been shown to help your brain functioning and your psychological well-being. Whatever your taste in music, would you believe there is a line dance to go with it? And today we're going to be chatting with Adrian, Barbara, Ellen and Peter from the Red Hot Rockers. Hi everyone and welcome to your wellness zap. Are you feeling a little bit lethargic, a bit tired? You've lost your get up and go, it's got up and went. You need to pump yourself up because today Andrew's going to give us some fabulous strategies on how to pump yourself up, to get your energy, to get yourself back on track. Welcome to Andrew and over to you. Thank you, Carol. Yes, pump yourself up. We're going to do it without any substances that are artificial which is good news we're going to talk about today how do you lift yourself up when you're not having a good day and i think we're humans so we're going to have days that are not fabulous some days we're going to feel flat we're going to feel lackluster you know depending on what's going on in your life you're going to feel a bit down so the question i have for you is how do you keep yourself up or not necessarily keep yourself up, but how do you get yourself back up and doing what you know you need to be doing to live that wonderful life of joyful longevity that you want to live? So it's really, really simple. I'm going to give you three really simple things. And I think the first thing is to focus, refocus on your why, refocus on what's most important, refocus on your meaning or your purpose. And I talk a lot about finding your purpose, and to me it's got a face. So if you think about who in your life is most important? Who in your life is going to be influenced by the choices you make, the decisions you make? Who is the person that's going to be led by you, is going to be influenced by you, who's going to be inspired by you? And if you can think about that face, look at that face and go, yeah, I'm going to do it for that person because I want to be there. I want to be the best I can be. I want to be the best parent. I want to be the best husband or wife. I want to be the best grandparent. I want to be the best child. I want to be the best brother or sister or boss. Think about the faces, who you are influencing with your choices. Immediately, I know for me, that gets me back up and moving forward again. The second strategy is affirmation. Often when we feel flat, tired, lethargic is, is because we're telling ourselves, oh, I'm tired or I'm flat or I'm down or I'm depressed or I'm, I'm not in the mood or I don't know if I can do it or it's too hard. As soon as you start telling yourself those things, guess what happens? You start to believe it. So affirmation means tell yourself what you want. I'm full of energy and I feel fantastic. I'm on track. I do what I need to do because... It's important to me. Start affirming, telling yourself statements that will lift you and get you into the mood that you want to be in. Step number three, take action. 
the thing that's most going to get you pumped up is action, even when you don't feel like it. So here's a strategy for you. I want you to imagine you are a robot. You're not a human. You don't have feelings. And I just want you to get into action. If you're going to get up in the morning and go for a walk, when that alarm goes off, don't allow yourself to feel just as soon as you hear the alarm, you get up, you take a step, you take another step, and before you know it, you're in action. And as soon as you take action, you are going to feel amazing. I always know for me with exercise, the thought of doing exercise doesn't really excite me. The thought of being done with exercise and how I'll feel after it always excites me. So I will get up, I will get into action, whether it's eating breakfast, whether it's exercise, whether it's snacking on the right foods, whatever it might be, take positive action and you will start getting pumped up. So Carol, tell me a little bit about what pumps you up. Well, I'm a disco queen from way back. So one of the things that gets me going is putting on some positive music and you know, just jumping around like a crazy woman uh, to disco music. And that sort of takes me back to all the fun times I was ha had when I was younger and the, you know, the disco days. So music really pumps me up. And But I do also use those positive affirmations and that positive self-talk that you're talking about. So um, I definitely do that myself on a daily basis as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing, Carol. <laughs> well, everybody, I hope you've got some great ideas there. Think positive, take action, and see if you can put that into place right now. So thanks, Andrew, for sharing those strategies, and we'll see you again soon on The Wellness Zap. See you later. routine and some of these stretches can be done seated so I'm just going to show you just briefly how to adapt them when it comes to the hamstring stretch you can just put one foot forward lean on your leg and lean forward keeping a nice straight back and you'll feel a stretch right up the back of the leg so that's your hamstring stretch in a chair when it comes to the calf stretch all you need to do is really pull you can be sitting upright Really pull that toe right back. Pull it back as far as you can and you'll feel the stretch in the calf. So really focus on pulling your toe back. And this is another adaptation for the hip flexor stretch. If you can, if, only if you feel comfortable, you can sit near the edge of the chair and you can just let one leg drop and push your bottom forward. So really push forward there so you feel the stretch there. So there's a few options for you. Enjoy the stretches, let's do it. And welcome to 5 Minute Fitness. We're doing 5 minutes of stretching today, really getting us loosened up. To start with, we're going to work on the calf muscles. So with your feet straight ahead, just slide one foot back, just like you're on the railway track, so your feet are parallel. So, nice straight legs for your stretch in your calf muscle. So just lean forward like this, just make sure your feet are straight, and stretching out the calf muscle. Very important to do as we get older. The Achilles and the calves become tight, and you definitely don't want to snap your Achilles. Now change to the other side. So feet about hip width apart, slide it straight back and feel that stretch in the calf muscle. So just take a few deep breaths and relax. And if you can do this stretch every day, that would be absolutely great. In. Now we're going to do another calf muscle stretch. So we just take the foot back a little bit and then we just bend the weights on the back leg. So this is a bent leg. This one is a deeper stretch. It gets the calf muscles underneath. So just hold it there. Keep the abs nice and tight. Take it up, take the other foot back, a little bit, 
Light up the back leg. Bend. There we go. Bending it. Three S's of fitness. Stamina, strength, and suppleness. So we're working on our flexibility and suppleness. All right. Now we're going to do one that's really important because we sit down, is your chest. These get short because we sit down so much. So just turn, put your hands on the chair, and you really want to squeeze your shoulder blades back. So squeeze the shoulder blades back, so you get a really good stretch across the front there. So just squeeze it back. Oh, that feels good. Too much time on the computer. Feels great. All right, now another one that's really important for your back is the hip flexors. Because if you sit down, they shorten, put stress on the lower back. So I'll show you a standing hip flexor stretch. So we take one foot back, the heel is lifted. Note the heel is lifted. Then we bend both legs, and you're gonna tuck your pelvis under, squeeze your bottom, pull your abs in and tilt your pelvis. And you should feel a stretch coming through the front here. Hip flexor stretch. Please try and do this hip flexor stretch or any other hip flexor stretch every day. It really help with your back care. All right, the other side. Take the foot back. Like I said, lift the heel. Make sure the heel is lifted. And bend and tilt. So squeeze the bottom under, suck the stomach in. Feel the stretch down the front of the leg. teaching multiple dance styles for over 30 years and he's been inducted into the Victorian Rock and Roll Dance Association's Hall of Fame and he'll tell you that anyone can learn to dance and you don't need a partner to do it. It's all about great music, socializing, keeping active and having fun. Today we're going to learn about line dancing which can be multiple styles from waltz to cha-cha to salsa and beyond. And here we have the amazing Adrian who has the incredible sense of humour and he has a sp special way of teaching rock and roll and teaching dance classes. For me it's not about whether you can learn to dance, it's whether you have fun in my class. If you have fun in my class, you'll come back. 
if you come back, you'll eventually learn. So for my class, is all about fun. And my main thing is about people meeting people. So. But the whole aim of this is to build friendship. If you learn to dance, that's a bonus. It's just a, it's a pure bonus if you learn to dance, but it's not, it's not about learning to dance. So what about the actual line dances where you don't have a partner at all? Line dances, <laughs> believe it or not, every, they are the most difficult to do. Uh, line dances, people go, I want to do line dancing, and it, they're real fun, but the best way to learn to dance is to do a partner dance like um, um, uh, rock and roll, swing, jive, salsa, anything like that. It's fun because you learn six or seven moves and the basic footwork is the same and you learn all these moves with this basic footwork and you can dance them all, all over. Line dance is a little bit more difficult but it's great if you don't have a partner. It's just great fun, you know, but, and you become such a good dancer. But you've got to get past that early stage of doing the early beginner line dances and mastering the different types of footwork because as you get go on in one line dance, there is just so much, um, so, many, so many types of footwork, you know, in just in one dance. You know? I mean, a lot of people watching will just think that line dancing is boot scooting with the cowboy boots and the hat and, you know, so can you just no, enlighten us what, what your top style of line, line dancing is? No, line dancing is really every top 40 song you can imagine. And we're talking about the Country Line Dancing Association. Things like Love Shack has got a, has got a line dance to it. You know, like every song, someone will be, dissolved, will be creating a line dance and they'll actually do them with it. I've got this dance I'm teaching, Sophia, which um, I will teach for the rest of my life because I love it, but it's um, a salsa, a Latin track, you know, sung in Latin. You know, it's not nothing to do with country western. <laughs> so, no, no. I mean, if you go back to the disco days, I mean, you know, the... the um Californian Hustle, and that was all a line dance. I mean, yeah, yeah, and the yeah. bus stop, they're all, well, that's well, another form of line dance yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 Night Fever, Saturday yeah. Night Fever, you know, like when you, when you saw the movie Saturday Night Fever, they actually did the Night Fever, Night Fever, and that, that one there, and the little, you know, the, the, the um, yeah. uh, you know, and, and achy breaky moves or whatever, but yeah, you know, there's line dancing, is, I, I remember in 1960, there was a dance, I'm Italian, and we did the thing called the Hully Gully, but it was sung to an Italian song, the Tramontana. And it was almost achy breaky hard, but all it had was three little skips and then you would turn to the side. But achy breaky hard came out, I thought, hang on, that's so close to the Hully Gully from 1960. That's how far back, you know, line dancing goes. It's just... So what about the line dancing with partners? That seems like a new concept. Well, that's again a sequence dance and they're just, they're just partner dances where you, you do the same move over and over, but instead of moving around, you're just dancing on, on your own spot and moving left or right. And it's just a variation of a sequence dance. One, two, cha, 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 back up and turn, back up and turn. Leaders move in front. And step, two, three, four. One, two, jump, jump, jump. Back up and turn. Back up and turn. Jump. You know, they're really, really popular. You know, the, the rock and roll waltz has just been around forever. And, and I dare not play it in dance because you know, I will come up with rock and roll waltz. You know, with a cowboy cha cha, same thing. So, you know, there's, and, and there's different styles. There's the ballroom sequence dances, new vote. Then there's the western swing dances. You know, they're, 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 all, they're all great. They're really, they're really great, great fun. Yeah. But any, any dancing is, is fun um, if, if you're dancing to music you love. You know, and that's the main thing. People need to find, you know, style and music that they like, and then they'll, that, that will drive them. So what would you say to any other 57-year-old that might be sitting at home thinking, oh, I thought I might like to try, try some dancing, but, you know, I've got two left feet and four right feet, what, you know, what would you say to someone like that? Go and find a really good teacher and they'll teach you how to dance. But in our 10 years, we've seen a number of men, typically, <laughs> who have two left feet, or they think they have, uh, but with the right tuition and the right guidance, they're great. They can dance. Excellent. Yeah. So why do you love it so much? It's social. It keeps me active. 
Uh, it's a lot of fun. What happens to a beginner? So someone's come for the first time, how do you guide them through the process? It, the stress level will be high initially because you don't know. But after two weeks, and you've danced it over and over after two weeks, it suddenly is, how easy is this? Yeah. But too many people give it up after two weeks, you know, and they just lose that, that, that chance. And, you know, and really rock and roll, especially for guys, I could stand still and lead my partner around because rock and roll is mainly in the leading. The footwork gives you your timing, but if you know your timing and you can see what the girl's doing, then, or what the follower's doing, then basically you can stand still and just get out of the way and still dance rock and roll, which is why well, it's such a great dance. Every other style, if you get it wrong, you step on someone's foot or you trip over their foot, not rock and roll, it's the best. <laughs> Too many people give up on things that they try, anything they try, um, because our ego um, doesn't, we don't like to get things wrong or get things wrong in front of other people. A lot of us, you know, maybe have been um, uh, put down in school, and you know, in school, if you get things wrong in school, you get laughed at, or you stay down, or you fail, or you get yelled at, or you get spanked. So being wrong is not a good thing, and being wrong in public is not a good thing. But if you get past that, the rest of your life is pure joy. You know, because when you when I look at people on the dance floor, they're all smiling, they're all laughing, they're all having a good time. So how long do you think you're going to keep dancing for? Oh, till I drop dead. <laughs> I love dancing. <laughs> if I can dance about seven days a week, I'll be dancing. <laughs> Finished up going for a lesson, my first lesson. My first lesson was, you know, doing what they were doing, but I thought, I, I reckon I can do this. I, it, it was like a big challenge. And I started and it was within two or three months, I'd done tip lessons. There's, there's no look back on I me. Mean, my life had just changed so much. And I'm the happiest man. Ah, excellent. It's, That's what we like to it, it just it has changed my, <coughs> my, my, <coughs> pardon me, mm, my, my, my own person as well. You know, I'm just, I'm just happy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's so good, you know. And yes. You just go out dancing and you have fun. Yeah. There were, lots of them are forgetting their worries at home or issues at home. And they're just coming out and listening to music and dancing with people who want to dance with them. And that's the best feeling. Thanks for watching the show today. We hope you feel a little bit pumped up and a little bit stretched out. Plus, I hope you're not using that age excuse and just seriously thinking about taking up some dance classes. Because if you're 90 or under, then you should give it a go. If you'd like to know more information about Andrew Jobling and the Red Hot Rockers, then go to Facebook, Over 50 So What. All the guests you see on the show, you'll also find on the website, carolohalloran.com. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. All replays are there, plus lots of energizing fitness videos to help you bounce through the day. Over 50, so what? Be active, stay connected, and keep dancing! I'm Carol, see you next time. watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what?